Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 112 of my modded Factorio playthrough. We did not create a blueprint for this balancer right here. It might come in handy later, so should probably take care of that. See, that's a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 to 6. So it's this one right here. I kind of moved it there. All right, let's get that one set up. I think this is the old one, yeah. That didn't quite work right. So we'll delete it and save our new one here. Eight to six. No, I think we're out of bridges. Yeah, we need to return home for a little bit. Okay, let's see. What can we clear out here? Kind of have a lot of junk. Well, luckily, uh, coming back doesn't take a whole lot of effort, so if we forget something, that should be okay. Just grab some more of these rails. We seem to be using quite a bit of them. Let's see, I think we have to drive for this part. Yep, we're just going right here. Oop. Manual control. Let's see. Probably just keep it straight. It is kind of in the middle of the continent here. I'm just thinking further down the road we might have to move it over to the side here to open up this space, but... Track's already here, so let's make use of it as is. So since we're just going to be going straight up, I'll just uh, walk up here and deconstruct all these trees, or at least have it set up so we don't have to worry about it when we're in the train. Oh, I see. It was spaced over here because of uh, we didn't want to cross over onto that continent there. Still, later on we might have to do zigzags, but... It won't actually take that much effort to move a train track once the whole system is built, so that won't take too much effort. We're actually running a little low on power here. Something occurred to me. Maybe we should have a uh, a test signal of sorts on these power poles, just to make sure that they're connected. Because right now we really don't know if the circuit network is uh, properly connected or not, since we don't have any signals we're sending. So maybe on the way back, we can set up a signal generator. I have to figure out exactly where we should turn the train here. We don't want to hit that. We can make that work if we move the solar panels, I think. I would prefer having uh, straight tracks and irregular panel placement <laughs> over the alternative. Let's see, is this going to clear up here? Oh, boo, it's not going to. It's a pretty decent spot for the train track though. I kind of want to make it work, so maybe we'll have to do the irregular track after all. Speaking of power, they still have it here, yes. Although I guess it's daytime now, so it wouldn't matter. Should have checked that a few minutes ago. I do think we need an extra panel here. We'll get the necessary supplies and come by later to get it. Looks like we're running low on track here. So we'll have to turn around soon. Got some more trees to cut down. Including some scraggly looking trees. Oh, looks like we ran out of rail signals. Got some left over. Yeah, 
again, disadvantage of this is that uh, we probably would have gotten a heads up if we would have seen that blinking that we ran out of signals. But since it's always blinking, we don't look at it. Now at some point, we're going to have to turn the train here. Doesn't really matter where we do it. Looks like we're out of power poles, too. That, that makes sense, I guess. That we would have brought the proper amount of everything. At least that's the excuse I'll give myself. <laughs> it's kind of why when I carry stuff in the inventory or calculate things, I don't calculate what I'm actually carrying in the toolbar. So that's like that little extra uh, buffer to make everything go smoothly. It's kind of how I look at it. Okay. It looks pretty consistent. As far as exact position, we don't really know. So I don't really care. Oh, we got some bridges in here still. Or some uh, tracks. We've made it pretty far so far. Some nice little clear area for tracks right here. So how wide are tracks? So something like this. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So let's manually place this on the way back. Oops, but that's the wrong. <laughs> I lined it up with the bottom instead of the top. Yeah, I didn't design a diagonal track segment just because I didn't see it happening very often. So it didn't seem worth the effort. Yeah, when it's diagonal, sometimes it's hard to tell if this track is in the right spot or not. See, now that I'm looking at it, it looks like it's too close together, but... Oh well. Let's see, so these ones are about at a fourth. Yeah, these ones are substantially not nearly as drained. So there's not parity there. Okay, so I guess... Well, we're going to keep going straight for a while, and then we're going to have to turn. Well, we could turn now, but I think I'd rather just keep the tracks going straight, so instead of having a diagonal section to just go, you know, over, down, and over again. The roundabouts are also nice because they give the train a location to turn around if it needs to which does help especially when we're building tracks like this and we don't have a proper way in the network to turn around all right so sun's about to come up over here capacitors are very low what's the network look like after how many nights this is the first time I've actually looked at it while it was about to run out. Man, it's close. It's really close to being able to survive. But it's just not quite enough power. So, okay. As far as this last bit, we don't really know exactly where we're gonna want it to end. So it kinda depends on exactly how it lines up with this over here. So when we get close, we're probably just gonna do the same thing where we run a track down there, figure out where we want to go, and then back up. Alright, looks like we finally run out of stuff. Pretty close though, in that pass we almost went completely around the other direction. Oops. Well, now that we have the roundabout, we can tell the train to automatically go home. Since we're here, we probably should um, kind of clean up the inventory a little bit here. Okay, let's get packed up for another trip. Okay, everything looks pretty good here. Let's just make sure we're good on resources. 
Oh yeah. Yep. Looks like we were done making the landfill a long time ago. Yeah, this is all pretty good. Oh, there is the uh, the solar panels we need to build. So let's get that started now, and since that kind of takes a little while, we can go back to building tracks while this is building. So we just need the one pattern here. I wonder what we have all these boxes and inserters for. I know I, I forgot already. I know I put them there for a reason. Because we have all these stations. Oh, I might have... Um, I might have had them all pre-made for our unloading stations. So that's probably why they're there. Let's go with that. Okay, so... I wanted to come down here. Because I wanted to see what the minimum distance was. Now, we don't know exactly how this is going to be hooked up. But something like this that we did uh, right here. So there'll be a second track down here and all of that. probably want a roundabout or something right here. It should work out. I'm just trying to think ahead here, but it should be okay. So, let's put a roundabout in here. It would go basically right here. So, and I don't think we're going to end up using this section, but I'll just leave it on there for now. So with that, we now know where these other trucks are going to go. And in the event that we don't use uh, the roundabout, if we use like a T-section here, we could make this potentially smaller. I'm not sure exactly how much smaller it would be, probably not a whole lot, but if we needed a couple extra squares, that is an option. But for now, this should be okay. There we go. Now we know where we need to be. Let's just move the train onto that track. Oops. <laughs> okay. So that's where we need the roundabout to be. Let's make sure. I believe we're on the uh, left side. We need the power pole to connect. Yeah, I definitely need to build that, uh, I think a constant combinator is what we're looking for. Yeah, let's build that combinator real quick. There we go, and go home. We can pick up the accumulators and solar panels. And since it really takes very little effort to return back to the base now that we have this uh, rail system partially <laughs> in effect here, it takes, you know, it's not that big a deal just to go back and fix something. Thirty-nine, so that's what, one extra? I believe, yeah, it's the constant combinator. Oops. <laughs> Wrong direction. I have to want to copy this design here. We might use it later. It seems like it works pretty well. So I'm just going to just kind of pick up a bunch of stuff here. We'll uh, worry about that later, but we can put our constant combinator in here. Right there. Let's say output. 
Let's output a T for test. So see now it says uh, we have a red T there. And we have a green T. So when we go to the very end of the track in either direction, we should still have those two signals. It's just to make sure there's continuity between the uh, signal wires since they don't all auto place based on exactly how we have the pattern set up here. Okay. No reason to use robots for this. Let's check. Yep, we've got two T's. Uh, placing one pattern of panels would be easy enough. I don't think we need robots for this. Thus, we don't need to drive the truck all the way up here. And there we go. That should be all set up. Let's just have extra large panels. Okay, so this is a good thing of, of having those test signals to see how we have no T signal here. So that means it got lost somewhere. Ah, it looks like it's right here. Yep, we have our T signal, but not on there. Yeah, a long reach mod would definitely make this part a little more convenient, but I don't know. Long reach seems little OP, so I don't use it. There we go, we got our T's. There we go, we're good. Let's get in the correct side so it's a little easier to drive. Luckily now, placing these and getting the wires connected is a lot easier because <laughs> we're walking on land. There we go, we've come full circle. Let's see, we had our little pattern we built. Let's make it as small as possible. Let's see, does it fit exactly? Looks like it basically does. It's just one space lower. Ah, the only thing on there that we don't really specifically need immediately are these power poles. We can place those manually. This seems to work. It's not flashing. So, it would wait here, and then it would pull forward to here, and if it was blocked, it would wait here. and then pull forward to here unless it was blocked. So we can kind of test this a little bit. Yeah, so when this comes through, now that it's here, this train would only pull forward and then stop right here if it wanted to go that way. Let's set it up the other way. I believe this needs to be removed. See how all those lights are red? That means it would stop here. It would pull forward, stop here, and wait. Because if it pulled here, it would block this track. And this itself needs to be a chain signal for the purposes of the roundabout. Although this right here I don't think actually needs to be a chain signal. It can just be a standard signal. Because there's no reason a train would have to stop in that exact location. It can just go forward. You only need the chain signals if you need a train to stop somewhere for the purposes of not blocking other tracks. So a train coming this way only needs to stop right here to avoid blocking this track if, if this light is red. But it is red. 
There we go. It has to have these on both sides. Just trying to make sure these uh, lights act the way they should. See if that balances correctly. Sure looks like it is. Set this to be the right color of red. Something like that. And let's change the station name. Rubite 1. The reason why I'm doing this T section here is because when you and it's similar to how we did it all the way down here. But when there's a relatively small amount of traffic that's going to be uh, merging with the track, uh, a T-section is probably better than a roundabout, which just makes trains kind of have to zigzag all over the place. We did do it here, though. So there is that. Perhaps that should not have been done that way. Oh, well. Maybe later can go back and fix that. But let's hook up these other stations. Let's see, we got our T's, yep. Depends on how much traffic you have. If you only have one train that's expected to use a certain track, then it can be a, a single track. But in this situation, we're gonna have multiple trains because we have these three different bases. So it makes more sense that this be a double track. Now we can connect this. But we want this one to be a chain signal. So a train doesn't just go right up there and block it. What's the electrical network doing? Okay, not too bad. Those miners aren't taking up a whole lot. of resources. This is similar to before where it, it uh, wasn't compacting quite right. So let's let everything back up here. Okay, now let's fire it up again. Looks like this is just a 6 to 6, so it's nothing too crazy. Seems pretty good. And let's call this Crotinium. Crotinium 1. Okay, last bit here. Oops. <laughs> Forgot I still have those robots. Actually, those are kind of convenient. Let's try our T pattern out. So it looks like it's being blocked by this right here. Okay, seems pretty good. So, but we lost our circuit connection right here. Now I'm extra glad we have that. <laughs> Look at all these errors that would have existed without it. Let's see. This whole section is basically one track, or one. Only one train could ever take this, so. Speaking of which, this side can be done kind of the same way. Let the Bomodium flow. Kind of a hard color to mimic. 
Obmonium. Oops. Obmonium one. <laughs> Look at all that pollution. Yeah, that's gonna make the biters mad. Yeah, I believe this is a situation, like I talked about it earlier, where unfortunately having these three mining bases so close to the wall means these biters are gonna constantly be attacking. Unless we place the wall further away. And it's only gonna run a bunch in the beginning like this because we're uh, filling up. We're preloading the factory. So in the beginning, they're probably going to be attacking the wall a lot. But... As long as the wall remains undamaged... We should be okay. It's a fairly small section. Should be really easy to... Put a ton of turrets on there. Okay. That was the section I wanted to do, so we knew exactly where... They're attacking again where this track would be and now that we know we can just go straight down till we hit that and then straight down and then uh, match up with that although we might have to move it a little bit based on how close we are to that uh, that landmass but getting pretty close here we're about to have a complete network here Let's get rid of that rock. It's right here. Just so you don't have to see that power bar. The health bar there. Looks like we're starting to run a little low in resources. We still have enough to keep going, but we are going to run out fairly soon. So we'll have to make a trip back. And I would like to talk about the design of the first section of our uh, mega base here, the resource refining. And to do that, just for uh, so I can make some examples, I'm going to research uh, hydro refining. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But for now, I at least want to start the research. Luckily, it doesn't seem like it's going to take too long, regardless. So, as a quick overview, uh, hydro refining is the next step after crushing. So what you do is you take uh, your crushed resources and you add purified water, and you'll get some byproducts. And actually this process is one of the more complicated of the refining steps. There's the flotation cell, which we can make. And then afterwards, you can can sort the various chunks to get resources you need. But also there's advanced ore refining, which unlocks some faster machines, which we cannot make right now. Several resources there we can't make. But it does unlock the ability to create silicon, nickel, aluminum, zinc, and fluorite uh, more efficiently. So for now, we'll just uh, research that as well, since that's going to be part of the factory. And let's just keep going uh, down here until we run out of tracks. Looks like we're not that far away from being out. That's all the time we have for today, so I'll see you at the next episode.